Welcome back to Categorical Data Analysis with Julia. In this video, we'll cover inferential statistics for categorical data. Let's perform a chi-square test of independence using the chi-sq test function from the hypothesis tests package for the two categorical variables, survived and p class, to test whether different categories of passenger class are associated with different categories of the survived variable. Our output is packed with valuable information. The output object is of type Power Divergence Test, which gives us separate access to all this information, as you can see. Finally, the p-value is accessible with a p-value function. A small p-value would imply strong evidence against our null hypothesis, suggesting that passenger class did indeed impact uh, survival rates. In the next video, we'll cover logistic regression for categorical data analysis. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Categorical Data Analysis with Julia. Suppose we want to model the survived outcome as a function of the predicted passenger class variable. We first need to ensure that Julia recognizes our predicted variable P class as a categorical variable. So let's transform it. Now that we have our categorical predictor, we'll create a special object of type formula term. We use the formula macro for this, which sets up a symbolic relationship between our response variable and our predictor. The formula term object can be passed to various uh, statistical functions in Julia, such as LM for linear regression or GLM for generalized linear models. These functions take the formula term, create a model matrix, fit the model and output the resulting coefficients. It's worth noting that we don't use columns in the formula macro. In our next video, we'll take this formula term and use it to fit the logistic regression model with the GLM function from the GLM package. So, uh, make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to Categorical Data Analysis with Julia. In this video, we will fit the logistic regression model. The necessary GLM package is already installed and imported. Its GLM function takes as its first two arguments the formula term object we just created and the titanic data frame. The third, the binomial argument, specifies the distribution of the response variable. In our case, we are modeling a binary outcome, so we use the binomial distribution. The last argument, logit link, specifies the link function, which defines the relationship between the linear predictor and the mean of the distribution function. In logistic regression, we use the logit link function, which links the probability p of the positive class to the linear predictor through the log odds function. After fitting the logistic regression model, we will interpret the coefficients and their significance in the next short video. Stay tuned! Today we are going to break down the output of the logistic regression model we created in the previous short video. Our model is predicting the probability of survived based on the passenger class variable. Starting with the intercept, its coefficient represents the log odds of survival for a passenger in the base category of the first class. The positive value indicates that the odds of survival are higher for first class passengers compared to a baseline. Next, the coefficient for the second class means that the log odds of survival decrease by this amount of second class passengers compared to first class. For P class 3, the coefficient this is even lower than the second class, indicating that third class passengers have the lowest odds of survival compared to both first and second class. STD uh, error gives us an idea of the variability of our coefficients. The Z column represents the Z score, which is the coefficient divided by its standard error. The PR greater than Z column gives the P value, which tells us if the coefficient is statistically significant. Significant. All our coefficients are statistically significant. The last two columns provide the 95% confidence interval for each coefficient. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.